Hi, I'm Samir Yaakov. This presentation is entitled BJT Filters and Capacitance Multipliers. Now the issue I'm talking about in this presentation is the case in which we have a source, say a voltage source with some ripple on it, and we like to feed it to a load, and we like to filter out some of the ripple. Now the simplest way to do this, of course, will be by a passive RC filter. We have a resistor, we have a capacitor, so we have a filter here, and of course we'll have a breakpoint, a low frequency pole, depending on the capacitance and these two resistors in parallel. And therefore, by choosing properly the values of say the capacitor and this RF, then we can have a smooth output. Now the downside of this filter is of course, is when we need DC to pass through this filter, then there's going to be a drop here, there will be going to be losses, and in, since the same current is passing here and here, then the efficiency is really a function of the ratio between the output voltage and the input voltage, and the larger the resistor, then the lower will be the efficiency. Now we can overcome it by having a very, very large capacitor and a very small resistor, okay? On the other hand, we can use a more sophisticated circuit, which is this uh, BJT-based filter. And here, what we can see is that the filtering is done without DC component. So RF could be large, and therefore we can have a, a frequency, a breakpoint at very low frequency by a relatively small capacitor. And then we have a, actually an emitter follower so that the output here is following the base voltage within the base to emitter DC drop. So this circuit actually is functioning as a filter, but it is economical in the sense that you can have a larger resistor and a smaller capacitor without a very large drop on this resistor because the current passing here is only the base current, which is of course much lower than the actual collector or emitter current by beta. And here is an example of possible application. Here is a mains and rectifier. We have an initial filtering by this uh, C sub 1, and then we have this uh, BJT filter, and here is the output. This does just for protection against reverse voltage. So this will smooth out the voltage here, or the ripple here, and get a fairly nice DC output. Now one objective of this presentation of video is to clarify what I think is a confusion regarding this filter and what is called the capacitance multiplier. Now many places you'll find that this filter is referred to as a capacitance multiplier. I think this is a wrong name for this circuit. Although it has some features of capacitance amplification, but it has nothing to do with the filter action. So let's have a look, for example, at this write-up by this uh, website, and they are showing that uh, capacitance multiplies an electronic technique that allows reducing the voltage ripple. So they call this a capacitance multiplier. And then they said that the input impedance of this circuit okay, the input impedance, is roughly equal to the input impedance of the RC filter, okay, divided by beta of the transistor. Well, this is incorrect. The input impedance here is just these two, two components, R and C, has nothing to do with beta. As it turns out, the impedance that you see when you look from V out into the emitter, this impedance is lower than R1, C1 in parallel, in fact, and I'm going to talk about it. But just saying that here we have a, to obtain the same filtering with RC filter alone, one would have to use a much larger capacitance. For this reason, everything looks like the capacitance had been multiplied by beta, hence the name capacitance multiplier. I think this is sheer nonsense, okay, and I'll explain it. And here are some simplified model that we can work with. Again, this is a derivation of the Evers mole. This is the diode and the source. 
and f this is for the large signal, for the small signal, we have here the resistance that we see between the base and the emitter, this HIE that is derived from the H parameters, and then at the collector we have a current source which depends on the current of the base. So, first thing to ask is, in this circuit, is this transistor in the linear mode and what is the voltage across it? Very important. The simplest way to do this is just to sum up the voltages here. VB plus the voltage across the resistor, this is the voltage across the transistor. This plus this is this voltage. Now this is about 0.6.7, a diode, and then this voltage here across R sub F depends on the current of the base, which of course is a function of the current at the emitter, and therefore the current here is the current at the emitter divided by 1 plus beta, and therefore the voltage across the transistor is at least VBE, at least this one, plus the voltage across the resistor. Since it is 0.7, above 0.7, then this transistor is always in the linear mode. Very important. So it's acting as an amplifier. So now let's have a look what happens if the ripple is high. Now since we, the voltage across the transistor in this configuration, the DC voltage is very low, and since we have here DC at the base, here if we are going to have a large ripple component, then the collector might go actually to negative, I mean the voltage across the transistor might actually go negative, and of course the transistor will go out of the linear mode. So we understand that if the ripple is high, we cannot work with this circuit as it is, and we have to do something. One thing we can do is to increase this resistor very much, and by this we'll have a higher voltage drop and therefore a higher voltage here. Or we can add a resistor here, which is draining here more current, there's more current here, larger voltage drop on RF, and therefore the voltage across the transistor will be higher. Now in both cases, of course, the DC voltage across the transistor is higher, there is a DC current, so the losses will be higher. Well, there is no free lunch here, that's the way it goes. Now what about the high frequency response, the ripple attenuation? Well, we do have a low pass filter here, but let's not forget the impedance that we see here into the base. Now we can find out what is this impedance by adding HIE plus the reflected resistance, which is the resistance times 1 plus, plus beta sub f. So the pole will be dependent on the capacitance, of course, and these two resistances, this one and the total resistance here in parallel, this many times is going to be much larger than RF, so therefore it will be approximately RF and CF at the breakpoint. But that's not the end of the story. We have here two diodes, and the diodes do have capacitances, especially the one which is conducting. The capacitance of a conducting diode is fairly high. So there might be an injection here at high frequency, much above the breakpoint, into the load. So this is something to worry about and to take care of, and I'll talk about it later on. So what about the capacitance multiplier? Here is an example from a TI application note. So by a capacitance multiplier, we mean the following. We have a circuit, there is some capacitance inside, and we, when we look into the terminal, we see a larger capacitance multiplied by some factor M, okay? And this is what this circuit is doing. What we have here is two amplifiers. This is a follower, so the voltage here is like the voltage here. And now we have here a inverting amplifier, and the gain is 10 over 1, which is 10. So the voltage here is minus 10 times V in, because this is V in. And therefore the voltage across the capacitor is 11 times V in, because we have V in here, and we have 10 times V in. 
So therefore, the current that we are going to have here will be 11 times the current that we would have if the capacitor would be connected to ground here. Well, this is Miller effect. This is it. I mean, it's a glorified uh, Miller circuit. And what we see here is just a reflection of this capacitor uh, with an inverting amplifier with a gain of 10. So this is a capacitance multiplier. So why is it that the BJT filter is in many, many places referred to as a capacitance multiplier? I think there are two reasons for this error. I think it's an error. It's a mistake. And the first one is the following. We have a transistor BJT. There is an impedance here at the base. And we look into the emitter, we see the impedance divided by beta plus one, okay? So if in our case, when we look at the emitter from the load side, okay, not from the inputs, from the load side, we see a capacitor in parallel with the resistor, and then it's one over beta plus one lower, okay, divided by this factor. So you can say that what you see is basically a resistor which is smaller by beta plus one, plus a capacitor which is larger by beta plus one. The time constant is the same because when you multiply them, it's the same time constant, but the, since RF is divided by beta plus one, then the impedance is lower. So you can say that in this circuit, when you look from the emitter into the base, then you see as if the capacitance is larger, but then the resistor is smaller, so the time constant is not changing. So it really has nothing to do with the filter. And then I think there might be another reason for this confusion, and that is the following. If I have just a passive filter, R and S, then obviously if there is a DC current, I'll have to make the resistor small and then to compensate for it, a much larger capacitor, much, much larger capacitor. In this case, I can get by with a larger resistor because the DC is not passing through it and the capacitor can therefore be smaller. So you might say that in this circuit, it's like as if I had a larger capacitor. Well, I didn't have any larger capacitor, but you know, perhaps this is one more reason for this confusion of calling this circuit a capacitance multiplier. So let's have a look at some simulation. These are LT spy simulation. And what I did, I have here a filter like that. Here is the RC, and this is the load, the transistor. And then I've also put a passive network here. It's not loaded, there's no load here. This is just to see the breakpoint, okay? So first of all, I'm going to run an AC analysis, and here it is. You see uh, very nicely a first order system, of course. Now the green is the passive, the red is the active. This is the BJT filter. And you see here the injection of the high frequency through the parasitic capacitances. So by adding here a capacitor, still I have these capacitances, but then it becomes like a capacitive voltage divider, okay? And here is exactly what I see, that at one point it sort of stabilizes and it's not going up at this, okay? So it's still attenuating quite a bit the, the, the rip. Now what about the large signal? Here I'm showing a case, which is a bad case, in that we have a 10 volt DC and two volt ripple. So as we know in this circuit, the ripple is kind of restricted because the voltage, DC voltage across the transistor is small in this case. And indeed, if you look at it, you we see that the voltage across the transistor is sort of clamped because it is sort of getting into the saturation region. And therefore the output is corrupted because of the uh, distortion due to this clamping, okay? If uh, this is for a two peak ripple, if I change it to 0.5, which is kind of on the borderline, then it seems to be okay. 
uh, there's no clipping here, still the voltage across the transistor is just about going into saturation, but still we have some attenuation at the uh, higher amplitudes. So now I'm going to share with you some examples of the blunder that we have on the web regarding this whole issue of the BJT filter and capacitance multiplier. The first one I am showing here is a write-up by Cadence entitled Designing a Capacitance Multiplier as a Power Supply Filter. So they are talking about the power supply filter. This is by the way the link and I'm going to print the link in the description section of the video that you are now watching. So here is the write-up, Designing a Capacitance Multiplier as a Power Supply Filter by Cadence. And here they are showing this BJT filter with an extra resistor for raising the voltage here, as I've discussed earlier. And they are saying a simple capacitance multiplier circuit with the transistor is shown in the figure below. This is this figure. And then it says with this circuit the capacitance C is multiplied to 1 plus beta C. But again, it is multiplied when you look at here, but then of course the resistors are also changing and it has li little to do with the behavior of this uh, filter. And then they have this section here, capacitor multiplier with an operational amplifier. So we have a capacitor multiplier and mind you, we are talking about multiplier as a power supply filter. This is the subject of this uh, write-up, okay? So now we have a capacitor multiplier with an operational amplifier. And here it is, this is the circuit. And what it says here, capacitor multiplier can also be built with an operational amplifier instead of a transistor. And then capacitance amplification factor of 100 or larger are possible with this circuit. So let's have a look at this circuit. Let's see how it works and if it has anything to do with the filter. If I analyze it for the signals here, this is V in, there is a filter here, let's call this signal V sub E, this is a follower, so we have a signal V sub E here, so therefore the voltage across R1 and the voltage across R2 are the same, the voltages are the same, and therefore if I have a current here I1, I2 will be related to I1, by this ratio of the resistances and therefore the impedance that I see here, the impedance will be smaller by this factor and this is because without this circuit what I'm going to see here is just this impedance with I1 and now with this circuit I see a much larger current which means that the impedance that is seen is lower by this factor. Okay, so this is lowering the impedance, so uh, it's like the capacitance is larger, or hence the name capacitance multiplier. But it has nothing to do with the filtering, okay? Now, if this is a filter, then we have here an input, and now all of the sudden we have a high current here because of this R2, not only that, if there is a load here, the current to the load is actually coming from the power supply of the amplifier, not from this circuit here. So this whole thing has nothing to do with the filter, uh, which is the title of this uh, write-up, and this is not exactly a capacitive multiplier, so I think the whole thing here is just wrong. So what are the conclusion of this uh, presentation? First of all, I think that a BJT filter is not a capacitance multiplier. There are some aspects of capacitance multiplication. If you look at some from, say, the output into the input, the capacitance multiplier that has nothing to do with the function of the filter. Now, the BJ filter needs a voltage drop of about 0.6 for small ripple to be in the linear mode. And then for large ripple, it requires a larger DC drop and hence a higher loss. So this brings me to the end of this uh, presentation. I thank you very much for your attention. I hope you have found it of interest and perhaps it will be useful to you in the future. Thank you very much.